Hi everyone, welcome back to Crochet Rocks. Tracy here and in this video I'm going to show you how I've joined my squares together in my latest crochet along. You can also use this um, tutorial for any other blanket or any um, square joining that you need to do. But this time around, let me just bring this into focus, I have chosen to use my favourite ridge join. Now, I do my ridge join a little differently to, to some. Um, they usually, I've seen people do them with a UK double crochet, which is a single. I don't do it like that. I prefer this way because it's a much more even ridge from both sides looks the same. So how I do this, um, I will get a whole length of my blanket width, sorry, a whole width um, of my blanket and I will sew them or crochet them in this case together in one strip. Um, just move my darning needle and scissors out of the way for a moment and uh, then I go ahead and do the next one. So with the blanket that I was making, if I had a light coloured square, then this one would be a dark square. And um, as I mentioned in the previous video. So if you haven't found the crochet along and you want to take part, then I will put a link um, in the description box. And at the end of this video, it will pop up as well. So um, you will need a darning needle for the ends. I've already gone ahead and got rid of all of this one, but I'm going to show you on this particular um, strip. That's the word I'm looking for. So I've got four strips to join, two of each colour. Excuse me while I get comfortable. Now what we want to do is we want to have the right side facing and then the right side facing away. So they're back to back. This is the right side and this is the right side. And we can hold them just like this, just um, so that all of the corresponding stitches match up. So I've got my yarn and I'm going to leave a very long tail. I don't need to make a, um, a slip knot in it or anything, anything. So just going to join it because I'm going to sew it straight away afterwards. So you want to start in the very center stitch. So there's the first one and there is the second one. So you can see it just at the corner there, just at the left side of the corner. And then you want to find the corresponding one on the other. So there we go, it'll be this one because there's our three stitches. And you put your hook through both loops of each. Now I'm going to leave a very long tail because it's so much easier to sew in at the end and just bring up a loop. Now we're going to go in each stitch along in the corresponding stitches and we're going to do a slip stitch in every single one. Now you don't want this tight. You want to make sure that it's a nice even tension all the way along. It's much easier when you don't have a camera in between. Let's just go down a little bit and zoom a smidge so that you can see what I'm doing. So it's easier just to hold them together and then just pop your hook through the four loops, two loops of each stitch, yarn over and slip stitch. As I said, not tight. And then do the same thing in exactly every single stitch all the way along. To the other end and you want to make sure that you finish um, in the same stitch that you started so the middle stitch sometimes it will take you to this one and that's fine because when you pull your yarn through it works out fine so we're just slip stitching in each one so for now I'm going to just join them in the strip that I've shown you. Be careful you don't go, I was almost gonna go through there then. You just be careful you are going through just the two loops at the top of each stitch. And slip stitch all the way along. Nice and, I won't say loose. I won't say tight, you know, they're not, you don't want them tight. It will pucker 
if um, and pull if it's tight. But just a nice even tension all the way along. Okay, so we're going to do the same again in a moment with the other two and well, I'm going to do them one by one. I will show you when I get to the end. And then I'll show you what I do next. So we're nearly there. Okay, so this is the first one of our corner, which does seem to go through the middle one of the next. But don't worry if this one goes through the last one, because what we're going to do now, is we're going to grab our scissors, leave a very long tail and cut, and then we're just going to pull this loop all the way through. Now I'm going to leave it there. What I did with this one was I joined them all and then I sewed them all. So that's exactly what I'm gonna do again. So I'm just gonna leave these two ends. They're not gonna come undone. They're nice and long, really long tail. I'm still zoomed, aren't I? There we go. So yeah, we've got a nice long tail on each. So it's not gonna come undone or anything. So now I want a dark one following my, my pattern of dark light, dark light. So again, I'm going to find that middle stitch on both of my squares and I'm going to get a very long tail it doesn't have to be mega long I just like to leave it very long because it makes sewing in and burying the ends a lot easier not great if you're playing the on chicken I know but thankfully I've got rather a lot of this white didn't need so much of it so we're going to do the same thing again go in every single one both loops and do the slip stitch so as this may be a little boring just watching me do this over and over again i'm going to pause the video and i'm going to catch up with you once i get to the end here okay so i've got all the way along i'm going to cut a nice long tail and again just pull that through now i'm going to go ahead and attach my last um pale light colored i'll say pale uh light color onto this one um, now it doesn't matter which one you start with and which one you finish with because you always get dark light, dark light. So if you have a dark and a dark, you just flip them around, one around and it'll be dark light. It, it sort of works out really nicely. So I'm going to join this one and um, I'll come back to you again once I've done that. Okay, so now I've gone all the way along. I just need to sew in these ends so i will do one with you and then i will pause it and um, do the others and come back once it's all done okay so the beauty of leaving this lovely lovely long end is that we um, will have no trouble at all sewing them so what i need to do um, because we'll never get this completely flat and straight because you know the nature of the square is it rounds so what you want to do is you want to go back through this same stitch, but you want to catch some of that yarn. So if you go back through it, you, you know, you, you might just undo your stitch. So you're going in to that, but you are catching it. So then we'll turn our work and we want to do the same with this because this side, as you can see, this part of the stitch is a long way. If we pull this tight, that's still quite a way from it. So what I like to do is catch a little bit of that yarn and just bring it back up. Okay, and then I will make um, almost like I'm sewing a stitch, but I'll leave it there, come back through that loop and pull it tight and then all I have to do is bury it just bear with me one second really sorry about that that was the postman so all that I need to do now is bury this so I will go down and through some of these stitches but before I go all the way I just make sure I can't see that and it's it's not visible so 
now that's buried in there and what I do now is I catch a little bit of this downward post and go back through again and it buries and I do the same again I split this post just leave a little bit behind and go back whoops the other way and it buries and then I can just cut it off that's it and I'm going to do that with every single one of my ends um, you've seen one so you don't really want to see me do another one two three four five so I'm going to do that secure my ends and then I'll come back and show you how I, I attach my strips right now so um, this is what I was talking about before so if you have a light colored one here and you have a light colored one here and the darks are together you just have to flip this one around if you've done four because that way they they then match that's what I was trying to explain so now I have my two strips now um my last one that I did I deliberately didn't pull it so what I normally do is I go and tug these here just to make sure they are the same kind of like they're not pulling it down in any way they're in the right shape okay so now I just do what I've done along these edges along this long stretch but we have to be mindful because when we are joining this we want those two to match up so if you would want if you would rather do it then by all means pop a stitch marker in there just to keep those together in the right places if that makes you feel more secure doing it but what we're going to do is we're going to do it exactly the same way we're going to join in this corner now that's a knot one you know where it ended off so it's not really happy about me getting into it of course it would be wouldn't it do you know i could just <laughs> start the other end it would be easier but we need to get in there go in there we go it's not going to be as clean as i'd like because Funnily enough, I have two knots together, but that one's easier. So I'm going to bring in, I'm going to knock my phone on the floor if I'm not careful. I'm going to bring in my yarn. Again, lovely long tail because we're going to secure that at the end. And this might, oh, it came through quite easy. That's all right. And then we're just going to do the same thing. We're going to do our, just pull it through there because of the knots. It was a little diff more, a little tighter but just through the two loops exactly the same and securing it in a nice long strip rather than just one square. Um, like I said, we just need to make sure that we keep these together. Now, should you find that you've gone a little bit out of alignment, I don't undo it. What I do is, for instance, if this one, if I'd gone wrong here, I would go in the next one but I would go back to the previous one and then just go back into it. It doesn't really show. So um, if you have gone wrong, don't worry. Don't undo it. Don't stress. Just, um, you know, I hate the word, but bodge it, really. Because, you know, it doesn't show. It really doesn't. If you've gone into that one possibly twice. Now, it's so much easier when you don't have a camera between you to actually do this but it, the strip is quite heavy so it's harder for me to show you with the camera in between but we're going to go along we're not going to make it tight so it puckers and pulls we're just going to keep our tension free and but not baggy obviously we don't want it too loose just a nice even tension and I am making sure that I was on the camera I was starting to worry then that I might have deviated but yep, you just go all the way along and hopefully I've not gone wrong and my two strips will meet up nicely. But if not, then at least you'll get to see what it looks like if I do go through one twice. It doesn't notice. Done it many times because I'm, a, I'm someone who hates to frog. And if there's a way around it, I'll find it. So it's staying nice and... Uh, 
in the right line at the moment which looks you no know, bodes well doesn't it let's keep that going don't worry i won't be doing the whole strip on camera i just really want to get to this join okay it's very fiddly with a camera between goodness gracious there we go so here we are has it met no it hasn't so i can go through the same one twice and this will show you now it has met up lovely i will show you in a second just how simple that looks now i'm going to try it and go in to the part between my joins sometimes it depends how i've sewn it if it's too tight i'm going to sneeze I do apologize hang on Sorry about that, but that was a big sneeze. Good job I paused it. I've blown you away. Okay, so then we just go over that. Hopefully it's the last one. It's always at the wrong moment that you've got a sneeze coming, isn't it? Right, okay. We've gone past it now, so I'm going to pull that nice big loop. And I'm going to show you that you can't see it. You cannot see where that was it just looks exactly the same but you need to make sure that this meets up so that your crisscross is perfect okay so just carry on going all the way along and as i said if you've got a little bit out of alignment make your little correction by going through the same one if it's this side the same one and the next one on that if it's this one that's out of a line you go through the next one on this and go back to the previous one on that it's ever so ever so easy it's really easy i love this join it's my favorite join um sometimes the blanket you're making or the project you're making i should say um wouldn't look right with a ridge and you need to do um either the invisible mattress join which i do have a tutorial for um which i adapted from the knitting or you can just do a whip stitch, obviously, but this is absolutely my favourite join. So I'm going to carry on all the way to the end, drop my scissors on the floor, and I'll catch up with you once I get to the end. Okay, so I've done my very last stitch, cut my yarn, I'm going to pull that out, and now all I have to do is to secure both of these ends. Um, I don't feel like there's any need to make a slip knot or any other kind of knot that will kind of be bulky and it's easy just to sew the ends in to make one with a um, a darning needle and sew the ends in and so that's how it looks nice and straight with the crosses and um just keep adding your strips until you've done all of them so if you're making the same as me i think that's 20 20 squares as i remember um but if not just keep adding until you've done that and then i will um catch up with you on the next video which will be my border which you can either do the same border as myself or you can put whichever border you would like on it but i'll see you then thank you for watching as i said before if you haven't already don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell bye for now